Uh, Ms. Murray, please. Um, thank you, uh, uh, General. Could you, are you able to advise us uh, as to the projected budget for this six-month mission? Uh, I, I, I'm not, uh, Ms. Murray, uh, the Chief Financial Officer of the Department is in the process of capturing these and I, I understand that these will be reported to Parliament at an, an appropriate time, likely uh, in some months. Okay, so before the, before the six months is up, so I mean, can you give us an estimate of when that will be available? No, I'm, no. I'm unable to. Um, thank you. What, what, um, what role are our special forces playing? Are they, um, are they involved with training uh, the Iraqi and Kurdish fighters? Are they, and where is this training taking place? Are they providing co close combat advising or are they in a central location? Uh, thanks for that question. I mean, we've been focused on the RCAF portion of it. It's important to remember that we have had 69 special operations forces um, operating out of Erbil, uh, the northern area of, uh, of Iraq on the map behind you, working closely with Kurdish forces. Uh, they're in the vicinity of Erbil, uh, forward and, and working with various uh, Pershmega units uh, in what we call an advise and assist role. Uh, the Pershmega in that area are in, in essentially in defensive positions, gives us an opportunity to um, in many cases in a classroom and or, or in an open air setting work on both basic skills um, depending on the, the, the forces that we're uh, advising and assisting um, but also eventually in the planning, uh, the pre-mission planning of um, future operations that the, the Iraqi security forces may contemplate. So is this close combat advising at this point? Uh, I, I wouldn't say it's close combat advising, no. I mean, again, they're uh, certainly in the vicinity of what's recognized as um, Kurdish front lines. They're not at the front lines, but they have to, to go where the forces are. Uh, again, it's not risk-free, but I, it's not close combat. We haven't been involved in uh, supporting them. That's not really part of the mandate at this point. And if I may add on the Peshmerga, they are key to the success of that fight. They are one of the most proficient forces that they have in the region. And the fact that we have the opportunity to help them get to the point where they can be an effective force in the region is an important role that we see for our special forces. Thank you. And the Liberals a month ago proposed that uh, providing training support could be a unique and a special contribution of the Canadian Armed Forces, a military non-combat contribution uh, seeing as uh, how we were, our, our armed forces were so effective with that in Afghanistan over the four-year period. So is there a, a discussion about uh, the armed forces providing additional contribution to training uh, per, with the Peshmerga or with the uh, um, Israqi um, security uh, forces themselves? Well, uh, the mission right now and the parameters of the mission I think are familiar to um to, to all of you. Uh, we've been authorized for six months with the air uh, element I've talked to and the uh, special operations forces. As the uh, situation changed and advice is brought forward from the Chief of Defence Staff to government, there may very well be other options that are contemplated, but not, not at this immediate time. Um, so also, uh, I'm interested in other non-combat roles that our Canadian Armed Forces could play. I mean, my understanding is that, that uh, the airstrikes dispersed that the open uh, convoys weeks ago, and so there may be other ways that Canada can provide a, more of a contribution. And um, so with respect to the humanitarian needs in the area, uh, and the, the civilian um, distress. Is there a need for security for humanitarian assistance? Uh, and if so, is that a role that Canada would be able to help with? Um, just let me provide some context first. Certainly th there are and continue to be targets to strike. So this notion that there, that there aren't uh, targets for airstrikes is, uh, is not in fact um, uh, correct at this point. Uh, with respect to uh, what you were talking about, security for humanitarian efforts, I, I'm going to ask my, my colleague to talk about those in a second, but it's important to note that the Iraqis uh, the, and the Iraqi security forces 
ha actually don't want um, our support on the ground in the fight. They actually want to uh, own that fight. They see it as an Iraqi fight uh, to take forward. So, clarify, I'm not suggesting a combat role for the Canadian Armed Forces. Um, so I do have one last question. Um, in um, one of the briefings, uh, a, a commentator was quoted as saying that sophisticated uh, online media and propaganda campaign underpins ISIL's success. Um, would you, or success to date, would you, uh, what, what's your comment on that statement? And secondly, what, if anything, can Canada and our intelligence agencies uh, do to help counter that effectiveness with, uh, with online propaganda? So I would agree wholeheartedly that there are many facets and many instruments of power that can be brought to bear in this campaign. And the, and the point that you talk of, which I think we'd call the information campaign, is certainly an area that allies recognize um, that they need to address. They need to counter the ideology that is prevalent, that is causing young um, men and women in the region to, uh, to fight for ISIL. With respect to what other entities in the Government of Canada can do, it, I, it's not really my place to speak to uh, public safety or the other services that are involved in that, but I'm sure that that would be considered in due course. Thank you, General. Uh, time, uh, Ms. Murray. Uh, 